notice how people drive too fast through your neighborhood? Maybe they're late for work, or they're out of beer, or somebody's husband came home early. Whatever the reason, it's dangerous, and you've got to find a way to get them to slow down. Here's what you do. Get yourself a light blue shirt, some dark blue pants, a captain's hat, and a hairdryer. <laughs> and if a cop asks you, you tell him you're not impersonating an officer, you're a retired tugboat captain trying to get into hairdressing. Appreciated big, big day at the lodge. I'm coming home from town with the Flinty McClintock in his school bus. He's hoping to get the contract for the Possum Lake Public School. Anyway, we're driving on all of a sudden, bang! Transmission drops right out of her, rolls onto the lawn of the front of City Hall there. Hey? I figure, fair enough, we'll give them the gears for a change. <laughs> well, it turns out the school bus has got bald tires, no brakes, no muffler. She's got 700,000 miles on her, and Flinty has no license. So, he offers me the school bus. For nothing. I mean, a whole school bus. I mean, can you believe it? A school bus. A school bus. Okay, we made it. School bus is in the parking lot, Red. Great. I mean, trouble towing it or anything? Oh, no, not with the uh, sewage truck. No, it's uh, used to that kind of load. <laughs> Why'd we bring it here, Mr. Green? It's too big for the garbage man to take it away. Oh, come on, you guy. All you see is a dead school bus, right? Well, you gotta use your imagination. Well, I used to use mine all the time. That's how I ended up in the slammer. Okay, what are we going to do with it? Well, we'll put an outboard motor on the back bumper. Cover the holes in the floor with storm windows. Can you say glass bottom boat? Can you say big yellow torpedo? Oh, come Today's prizes are provided by Ellie's Electrolysis Emporium. <laughs> and uh, the winner of today's game will be awarded this coupon for a complete bikini treatment and back hair consultation. <laughs> Playing today is Mr. Ed Frid. <laughs> Mr. Frid is a low-cal animal control officer. Local. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, um, Mr. Green, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Fridge to say this word. Cover it up. Cover, oh, cover it up. your oh. ears. Love. <laughs> Love. <laughs> the word nice. is... Okay. okay. Uh, and go! All right, Ed, uh, people fall in this. Go quicksand. No, 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 no. Okay. All you need is... Thick gloves and a tranquilizer gun. <laughs> Okay, uh, this means never having to say you're sorry. Bumping into a deaf guy? No, 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 no. Okay, in tennis, this means nothing. Well, good manners. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, poets. Poets oh, write about this. A hermit named Dave. Mm, okay, yeah. let's go back to when you were a kid and you were acting kind of goofy and your parents said, don't worry, it's only puppy. Worms. <laughs> For you to be born, your parents had to make... Compromises. <laughs> Almost out of time, Mr. Green. Yeah. Okay. Romeo and Juliet were in... Oh, I got it. A play. <laughs> yes. Yes. I win. I love this game. There you go. <laughs> Sir, absolutely. That is a number one priority. Absolutely. I got it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, Harold, I got those uh, sticky notes you wanted. Oh, thank you very much. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. They're green. I can't use these. I need pink. I can't work. I can use these, though. These will be fine. Thanks very much. You know what I'll do? I'll use a pink highlighter, and even though they're green, I'll know it's still a number one priority because it's written in pink. Well, that, that seems simple enough, Harold. Oh, yeah. I've got everything prioritized by color codes. 
Yeah. It's just great, but now that you got stickies, I can take that off my list. This is great. I'm making my list smaller. Get stickies. Get stickies. Get stickies. Get stickies. Yeah, get stickies. <laughs> well, this is quite a system you got going here, Harold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Problem is, I got so much on the go, I need more room. I need space. I even got stickies on the back of my chair. <laughs> They're low priority ones, though, so it's okay if I don't see them that often. I even got stickies all over my computer monitor. I hate doing that, but I gotta do it. I'm out of room. So I'm gonna put a big wall right in here, right? Stickies everywhere, Harold. <laughs> How are you going to get any work done? You got notes all over everything. <laughs> I'll correct. What am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. All right, all right, all right. What are you going to do, okay? You're going to abandon this whole stupid system, okay? Get yourself a calendar with a pencil and a great big eraser on it. There you go. A calendar and a pencil? A great big eraser on it. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a number one priority now. All right. That's... Here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I make a note that there's a note there. Hey, Red, do you find me attractive? I don't mean physically. Everyone finds me physically attractive. I mean magnetically. Are you getting enough sleep, Hop? Not really. I think it goes back to when I was in the war. Korean. The Mugu Guy Pan Delta. A bunch of us guys were uh, horsing around trying to kill the boredom. I put on my helmet, not knowing there was a live grenade inside it. And then it went off. That would be pretty loud, I would think. Caved in the whole left side of my head. We were miles away from the nearest hospital, so they took me to the nearest restaurant. Where they had a chef put a metal plate in my head. A real metal plate. It was hanging above the stove. I think actually it was a strainer. Yeah, I wish I had one of those right now. Somehow, over the years, I think that metal plate in my head has become magnetized. I don't, have, I don't think that's possible, even in your world. That's so? You think that's magnetism holding that up? Yes, I do. Pat, that's an aluminum pop can. Aluminum's not magnetic. That's a different kind of magnetism. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I believe it's called gum. Take a look. I can't look at it, Red. Why not? My head only points north. <laughs> this week on Handyman Corner, I'm going to give you young people a history lesson and a life lesson. Unless you stapled so much jewelry to your head, you can't hold it high enough to see the TV. <laughs> this unit here is an old ringer washer clothes washing machine. Technology hasn't really changed all that much. You still got an agitator in there. And you put your detergent, your water, and your clothes. <laughs> you got a real good feeling about this. All right, now to empty the machine out, what you would do is take this hose, hook it on your laundry tub, and then you just push this knob here. Oh, man. All right, now, this is where it gets real interesting. To squeeze the water out of the clothes, that's where the ringer comes in. You just would feed the clothes in through the ringer, and it would get enough water out that you could then hang them out on the line to dry. See? The danger was you'd lean in so close to the ringer, you might get your tie or your nose hairs caught in there. So technology moved on. And now my wife wants me to throw this whole thing out. But if she had her way, we also would have thrown out those old oil drums sitting on the back porch. And then where would we be? Well, we needed an old oil drum. That's where the life lesson comes in. Recycle. Get creative. Break new ground. Use your noggin to find a new way to use an old thing. The married guys know what I'm talking about. All right, I use the agitator to mix up the old cans of paint. The color doesn't really matter. We're only painting the fence for crying out loud. And you see what I've done here? I mounted these shower heads the same distance apart as the fence part. Huh? See, and then when I push in the knob to drain the machine, all the paint's gonna spray out these shower nozzles. See what I've done? I've turned a useless old ringer washer into a fence painter that doesn't use a brush and almost never needs paint. But here's a bonus. If you tie a piece of rope to the other end of the fence, and you run it through the ringer, like that, the whole unit becomes self-propelled.
remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. you older guys who one time or another may have said you know I forgot what I was gonna say <laughs> huh. you may think that's senility but it is not it is very good health you know you've got a, you've got a few stories you've told a time or two over your you know the kind of stories I mean no no not that kind I mean the kind that, <laughs> I'm talking about the kind that you would tell your wife you know and you you just get started into the story you look at your friends and they're they're looking at their watch eh? <laughs> And they start checking that their watch is working. And they start using their watch to check their own pulse. <laughs> and you glance over to your wife for some support, and she's staring at you like you're the source of the bad smell in the fridge. <laughs> These people aren't feeling well. They have a disease called boredom, and at that moment, you are the carrier. <laughs> you are the typhoid Mary of monotony, I'll tell you. And I'll tell you the most dangerous thing. You run the risk of boring yourself to death. <laughs> Your subconscious knows that, see? So what it does is you get into one of those stories, it raises the drawbridge between that story and your mouth. Huh? Shuts the whole thing down, just like the Teamsters. And if you need some proof, the next time you blurt out, I forgot what I was going to say, just look at the looks of joy and relief on the faces of your friends and family and in the deep recesses of your own mind. Remember, I'm pulling for you. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Everybody these days wants an interlocking brick driveway. It sets the place off real nice, and it doesn't just say money, it says interlocking money. Well, here's a cheap way to have yourself an interlocking brick driveway. Before you pour your cement, you lay down a tight grid work of primer cord inside the area. I would recommend not smoking while you're doing this. You'll be smoking long after you're done. And then... You just spread it smoothly over the grid. You know, we have a saying in the demolitions business. What doesn't kill me makes me hard of hearing. <laughs> that doesn't mean we have no common sense. <laughs> Maybe we better take cover behind this protective barrier. <laughs> okay, um, while we're getting there, you know, uh, actually, when we welded the storm doors onto the floor of the school bus, we forgot to allow for the flammability of all the stuff the kids had dropped under the seats over the last 30 years. <laughs> there was lunch bags, exploding pens, portable nuclear devices. It was, it was okay, a Okay, Mr. Green, uh, it's still smoking, but the really bad smell is starting to die down now. Yeah. You, you know, Red, I think you're going to have to give this whole boat thing a bit of a rethink. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm way past the boat idea. Huh? <laughs> now... Did you guys notice what happened when the floor caught on fire in the bus? Yeah, you mean the way the fire department refused to come? No, no, no. I mean, did you notice the whole bus kind of rose up a little bit? Huh? No. Huh? You know, it was okay for you to smell the smoke. I just don't think you should have inhaled. No, 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 no. All the hot air, all the hot gases trapped inside the roof, right? Hot air rises. That's why they have hot air balloons. And, of course, the school bus is made out of aluminum. It's got no engine, got no transmission. Hey, so she's kind of late, and up she comes. Hey, see where I'm going with this? Yeah, the prison hospital. No, no, no. If we can lighten the school bus even more, take the wheels off, take the bumpers off, huh? Start a fire inside. Hey, what do we have? A great big aluminum hot thing? No, 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 no. We'll have an orange aluminum airship, huh? It'd be like the Goodyear blimp, you know, but it'll be a school bus. That's all. Is that good? Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, because we'll have all those seats. We can all ride around in there. We can control the altitude by how hot we make the fire. You know, I'm, ju I'm, just, trying to, I'm just trying to figure out um, what's wrong with this idea. Oh, yeah, I remember now. We'll all be killed! No, no, 
I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just float around maybe a few feet above the ground just to be sure we're safe, eh? Well, what about other aircraft bumping into us? That would be inconvenient. Yeah. It's a school bus. When you see them coming, we'll just flick on the flashing lights. They'll have to stop. <laughs> so we're going to play golf. Of course, I'm just waiting for Mike. Oh, there you go. Where are you going to play? Okay, we're all set. I tee up. Got a good one. I got all of that. Got all of them. All right. All right. Hey, <laughs> give me five. <laughs> all right, Mike. Here we go. Here we go. He's little, but he's got quite an unusual swing. I think he picked it up in prison. All right, Mike. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Give her a go. Okay, we don't count that. There we go, Mike. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's a sh <laughs> No, good. No, it was good. It was good. All right, here's the uh, tandem pairs. Uh, you don't see this too often. Uh, they were playing a little slow, so I thought we'd not. Couple of beauties, guys, couple of beauties. <laughs> I think one of them actually outdrove me. So we pick up our gear, and uh, Mike's gonna go in the cart. Uh, Mike, no, this way, Mike, this way, this way. All right. So we're gonna walk down, the, down to our drives for our second shot. Uh, okay, yeah, looks like... Uh, Who's away here? Who's away? Oh, Mike and me. Well, Mike goes and gets his ball. Mike, that's not really in the rule. Not really. Hi, Mike. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> so now we got a little thing going. This is our approach shot into the green, and Winston's first one up, and uh, he hits a real nice shot here. And, you know, he's one of those guys who hits one good shot, and then look at that thing. Eh? Now he's all, now he's all Mr. Big, and he picks out his wallet, and he says, hey, guys, I got 10 bucks, says that's the closest to the pen. Oh, throw back there, cut, not cutting the lawn, eh? 10 bucks, there you go, okay, yeah, yeah, we got it, yeah, big deal, okay. All right, I'm in, I'm always in. Mike's got a pretty good wad of cash. <laughs> it's been paid in. Oh, uh, Dalton's wallet hasn't been open in a while. <laughs> but, uh, good to see he's in for a... Uh, He's in for the 10. All right, who's up? Who's up next? Winston Shaw. I don't want to go right now. Somebody else go. Somebody else go. Mike, you go. Give her a go. Oh, that's a good one. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh, okay. Winston's out of the money. That's good. All right, go. Oh, man. Holy oh, smoke. Oh, All right, Dalton. Loosen up that swing and uh, let her rip. Oh, hey. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, boy. Oh, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. And then, uh, all right, I'm gonna really think about this one. Uh oh, straight up, sky it, sky it. Look out! Hey, look out! Look out, guys! Look out! Get away from the money, Dalton! Incoming! Incoming! Look out! Look out! Oh boy! Oh! 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 oh. There's the guy. What's he doing? Oh, look out! Oh! All right, there we go. Spending quality time with a youngster doesn't mean you always have to be risking lives and destroying the environment. Well, you know, you teach him some gentle skills like how to build and fly a kite. Huh? You know what? This kite's going to go a mile high. Yeah? You'll see. <laughs> well, you know, I remember watching my dad build kites. That was something. I guess that's where I learned most of my swear words. <laughs> and that way, dad's always with me instead of in a condo in Florida. <laughs> You know what? You're going to remember this day for a long, long, long time. You see, it's not what you do with a child. <laughs> we don't need that. We don't need that. That's okay. That's okay. There you go. That'll still fly. That'll still fly. Come on now. Okay. It's not going to fly if you just stand there. You got to run. You got to run. Run, run. Move, move, move. <laughs> there he goes. What a little guy, huh? Someday you'll have a boy of his own and he'll take him out kite flying and he'll remember this day. <laughs> Come on, you're running like a girl! Run! <laughs> oh, the humanity. We were so close. So close. Mind you, we're not blaming anybody. No, if God had meant for man to fly, he would never have given us school buses. We had 17 barbecues hooked up to the frame of the truck. We had them running real good, really pumping the heat out of there, and after the first hour, we had liftoff. 
You know, it was kind of spooky when we cleared the trees. <laughs> Scared the heck out of old man Cedric, didn't oh, it? Oh, sure did. <laughs> you know what? When we buzzed over him, he thought we were a bunch of aliens. He yelled up, UFO! <laughs> That was amazing. Yeah. Nobody's been that high on a school bus since the 60s. Yeah. And all the hot air caught inside the bus, and we wanted to adjust the height. We just turn up the old barbecues. Why, well, we could have floated like that forever, but like I say, we're not blaming anybody. Okay, look, look. I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry. It was instinct, you know? I mean, I saw the railroad crossing coming up. We're in a school bus. I just hit the brakes and opened the door. <laughs> We drop like a stone. <laughs> oh, same time. Yeah, you guys go ahead. I'll be right down. Save me a seat, Mike. <laughs> if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after me. Thought we could play a little game tonight. I'll show you some bruises, and you guess how I got them. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Everyone take a seat. Everyone get their themselves. Sit. Oh, call rise. All rise. Bondo Omni Funkus Moritai. Sit down. All right, guys. Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. All right. Uh, first order of business. Need a show of hands. The guys who are willing to drive the kids to school. Okay, then that means you're all going to have to stay home and look after them all day. <laughs> okay. Keep them up. 